Hey everybody, Jose Gardner here with Long Range Tactics. Today we're going to talk about how I choose to employ an actual powder scale while loading my match grade ammo on a progressive press. Okay, so as I mentioned today, we're gonna to talk about how to incorporate your scale into loading with your progressive press. For, for what I'm talking about here is match grade rifle ammo. Obviously, a lot of people are familiar with progressive for pistols, for something high volume, like a 223 or something, but I actually load all of my non-magnum non calibers on my progressive, uh, even for my uh, PRS style or just long range shooting capabilities. What you're used to seeing when you see a progressive is some sort of volumetric measure, usually in one of these positions and it's activated by a case being bumped into it. And a lot of people will kind of knock the volumetric measure, for, especially for like non-ball powders, you hear the term doesn't meter well on your powders. And that may be true. I think obviously the better you get at reloading and understanding nodes and all that, volumetric can be used just fine. Nonetheless, I have found that my scale and or scales, there's actually a second scale out of the picture, keep up just fine with my progressive uh, and the scale being kind of the Achilles heel of what people believe holds the progressive back for match grade loading. Um, the primer seating's fine. I believe with the right dies and the right process, your bullet seating can be fine. You avoid run out and kind of OAL differences and the like. But the powder measuring is really where I choose to make sure I like focus on my uh, precision. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I employ that. So as you can see here, I have a funnel die is what we call it. So um, the lock and load AP powder funnel die. I think I got this off Amazon. And yes, you will see I have two sets as I was uh, forgetful one day on where I put one and ordered another one, found the first one. Nonetheless, this is what it comes with. So you see it's literally just like the screw body of a die. It goes down into a position. I'm not familiar with Dillon's. I've never really used one, uh, but I assume that really any progressive that you can actually screw a die into, you could probably figure out how to implement this uh, tool. It'll come with two different inserts. What that's gonna be is, if I can kind of line up the picture correctly, hopefully you can see kind of different size mouths. So if you're loading a big, like a, you know, your 45 caliber pistol or, you know, a 45, 70, something larger in caliber, uh, just that larger opening is gonna help that mouth marry up better and uh, drop your powder down. But what it is, is as you can see, there's kind of a little funnel shape there to it. Um, you drop it down in and you're, if you purchase one of these, it's gonna come with a plastic funnel. You drop it there, it's sitting in position, you take your powder, you drop it in. However, one day I uh, just got curious and I use the Area 419 powder funnel uh, that has on the screw on inserts uh, for even my single stage reloading and I was like, hmm, that looks like it fits pretty well. Dropped it in there and it works just fine. And what you'll find is obviously that the um, non-plastic funnel is gonna have obviously less static issues, as well as it just has a larger mouth, which means especially your powders that are larger particle sizes, as well as any powder in general, is just gonna run through it faster, less clumping. It's gonna speed up um, your reloading process. So that all being said, um, I'm going to walk you through my process for how I uh, throw on my progressive really quickly. Okay, so as I mentioned, here's my priming position, right? So I'm gonna run my press to prime that case. This case is now gonna move up into my funnel die while the previous case actually seats. I'm gonna take my powder, drop it in my funnel. It went straight down, no clumping or any stopping to be uh, concerned about. I go ahead and take my bullet, seat it, prime my next piece, come up nice and smooth. Now I've seated this piece, my Charge just finished, it was that fast, no really waiting to be concerned about. I take it, now make sure I prime my next one, come up, seat, and now my charge is ready again. It really is that smooth. Um, some tips, if you really wanna go fast and don't mind spending the money, you can get a second scale, whether it's a second matching scale, or I actually have um, a different kind of scale and what I do before I reload on big batches, let's say I'm going prairie dog shooting or loading for you know a carbine match or something like that. 
where I'm going to have a high volume of shooting, I actually take my second scale and calibrate it against my first one and make sure they're throwing good just to give yourself that, you know, that mental confidence that they match. And once you've calibrated them against each other, now you've got two where you're very rarely ever waiting on your scale to throw. You make sure and take that time to prime each round good, come up, take advantage of your powder, your powder die and you can go just as fast about as your volumetric measuring of your powder and still get a lot of speed and efficiency and accuracy loading out of a progressive for your match grade rifle ammo. Okay, so one more note that I wanna make sure I share that I think helps quite a bit. As you can see, this bench and this bench are not connected clear separation and this helps I believe definitely my speed uh, and it definitely helps avoid uh, precision issues when it comes to the powder throwing and what I'm talking about is as you'll see obviously when I run this up my bench shook a little bit right there is some level of vibration introduced I used to run these on the same table and I noticed that sometimes the charges would be slower than others, and I believe it depend on how much vibration I introduced into the system. The scale is very sensitive. It has to be to be very precise, and it would actually stop because it was trying to make sure that it did its job right. At least that's the logic I tell myself. Nonetheless, you can imagine that a scale does not want vibration to work right. Now they're on two different benches. There's several ways to approach this. You could come out from the wall with some sort of like floating um, surface above your workbench if you're lacking for space. I've seen guys who actually have a, um, a roll top cart that they can lock in place and they'll put their scales on. However you do it, just make sure, help yourself, and don't put your scale on the same surface as your press. Then you can run your press as vigorously, as quickly as you want, and it will not affect the speed and efficiently, efficiency with which your scale is going to be throwing your powder charge. Uh, so pay special attention to that and you'll set yourself up for success. So I hope that was helpful. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other ideas or any questions about the process, feel free to give us feedback or idea topics. I'll cover whatever you would like. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Go follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, help us spread this information, this great content to other followers who have interests like you. Uh, with that, I uh, hope to see you on the range and thank you for your time.